Well, hello. Welcome to my humble abode. I think that's how you say it. This is my office. My new iMac 2021 setup tour. Let's talk about it. to bring you a special report. This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac. It's an all-in-one application that will help keep your Mac running at its best. It's packed full of features, including ones for protection, such as malware removal and privacy scanning. This lets you know which apps have access to your camera and microphone at all times. If your Mac is running sluggish, Clean My Mac can help with speed by running the optimization or maintenance features. While the user interface is extremely simple, some may find it a little confusing if you're new to this type of application. If you fall into that category, all you need to do is run the smart scan feature. It will clean up junk files that are hard to find on your own, optimize system performance, and scan for malware in a matter of seconds with a single click of a button. For more information, including a free 30-day trial, make sure to hit the link in the description. So to kick it off, let's talk about the desk that I'm currently using. This is the FlexiSpot desk. It's um, one of many. They have a lot to choose from, which is one of the best reasons to go with FlexiSpot because you just have a lot of different choices and their desks are very high quality and premium sit to stand desk. So this is a motorized desk. It's extremely quiet. And over here we have our like um, uh, ability to store different heights. So we have four different storage options, I guess, in terms of saving presets. So if you have you know, this desk in an office and you have multiple workers, or if you just want to have different positions throughout the day, so you wanna have a sitting position or a standing position, you can save those in these one through four numbers. And then you have two arrows right here that you know, just by tapping the up, it will move the desk up and then going down it moves the desk down and you can hear how quiet those motors are. It's pretty quiet. And what I really like about this desk is it has two USB type A ports here and a USB C port um, that you can connect different devices to and charge them. So there's no need to have like a wireless charger or other charger on your desk. You don't have to have any wires running or anything like that because you could just plug them right here into the front of the desk and then charge your device. One of the really cool features about it is it has a drawer unit built into the sit to stand desk. This is something that you don't see typically when it comes to these type of desk. So that was the reason why I went with this specific one because of this drawer. It's a 48 inch desk and it's available with a glass top or a wood top. It also comes in different color variations. Hit the link in the description to learn more if you wanna pick one up. In terms of its height adjustments, it can go all the way up to 47.6 inches in height and then it can go as low as 28.3 inches, so it's extremely versatile. And it can hold 110 pounds, which is definitely great in terms of lifting capacity. One of my favorite things about this office that I'm going to uh, show you throughout as I, as I show you everything, is everything is on casters. And I'm super proud of it. I know it's so simple, but having everything on wheels makes a huge difference. So I can just move the desk out if I need to, I can move it back in, and like I said, everything in this office is on casters. I even have this Ikea drawer unit on wheels as well. So that way I can reorganize it however I see fit. If I need some extra space, I can roll everything out of the office. Or if I want to move this desk to that wall, I can do that without having to break my back. So whenever I'm not standing at this desk area, I'm actually sitting in the Autonomous AI Ergo Chair Pro Plus. I've had this for a while and it's held up really good. Some of the things on it feel a little bit cheap, like the armrest, but other than that, this chair is extremely solid. I wish I would have went with the cloth texture instead of the rubberized texture, but you know, maybe the reason why it's held up so well is because of this rubber type design, but it is comfortable overall when you're talking about like sitting in it for a long period of time, has tons of adjustments. It is a bit pricey coming in at like 700 bucks. And for that, you can pretty much get a Herman Miller. So I'm going to leave that choice up to you. However, I'm not disappointed in the chair. I think it's a great chair. So one thing you're gonna notice about this setup is I tried to keep it as clean as possible. So we have a blue theme going on, which matches the 2021 iMac, because I did get the blue version. I just wish that uh, the front blue matched the back blue. I'm not sure why we have uh, two different color blues going on here, but in either case, I do like the blue color. And even the white 
uh, bezel on the front. It doesn't bother me as much as I thought it was gonna bother me. The iMac I went with is an eight core CPU and GPU with eight gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. I chose not to spec this iMac out since it's primarily going to be for my wife or pretty much as a secondary computer to tinker with, but I do have a review or experience video coming up. Let me know if there's anything in specific you want me to talk about or cover, and I'll make sure I do it. And it's sitting on top of a FlexiSpot uh, monitor stand. On the front, it has this little stand with a flat face to it that happens to be magnetic. They even include these little magnets that happen to look like sorry board game pieces. This part slides out to reveal a drawer with several dividers. Inside here, I have the 12 South Stay Go dock, which I used for a while now. And since the iMac has limited ports, it's really come in clutch. I also have an external SSD to help with my limited storage. It's from Sabrent and it's the Rocket Pro. It has fast storage speeds and it's really reliable. The most unique feature about this stand is that it requires power by plugging in an attached USB cable. There are a couple reasons for this. The first is it provides power to the USB port on the side, which can be used to charge a device. The second is that it powers the UV lights, which can be toggled on and off by the button over here on the side. This can sanitize a mouse or a keyboard, so that's pretty cool. So if you're a storage nerd or a clean freak, this stand has got you covered. One thing I do wanna talk about is the iPad Air over here that I'm using as like a secondary monitor using Sidecar. And the iPad Air that I chose is also the blue iPad Air, which really pops next to the blue 2021 iMac. I mentioned on Instagram a while back that I was interested in starting a podcast soon or getting into streaming more. So I wanted to make sure I incorporated things that can make this easy for me to get started. Behind the iMac, I have an Elgato desk mount for holding cameras. It's affordable and has a few points of adjustment, including the ball head at the top. Plus there's a lot of additions that you can add on to it. Speaking of the ball head, I have my a7 III and Tamron 17 to 28 lens mounted, which I use for video calls and hopefully streaming soon. To make this possible, I simply run an HDMI cord into a Camlink 4K, which is plugged into my iMac using a USB type A to type C adapter. So I know I told you that I'm using the a7 III as a webcam. However, this little mount right here that I have on the Elgato stand is really cool. So if I put it into the unlock position and then just squeeze the two buttons here, I can just easily pop off the camera. And now I can go and take pictures with it. I can use it outside. I could use it for video, stills, whatever I want to. And then when I'm ready to use it as a webcam again, I just come back in, hold down those two buttons and then pop it in. And it will just click right into place. And then just to be sure, you can slide it into the lock position. Now you don't have to worry about it coming undone or anything. For lighting, I picked up this little LED desk lamp that has seven stages of brightness and temperature control. It has multiple points of adjustment, so angling it is relatively easy. It's from Tautronics and it matched my setup well, which is why I went with it. It doesn't have the best build quality though, so it's made of mostly high-end plastics. You know, the benefit of having something that's built a little cheaper means that the price is going to be cheaper. Plus, this happens to provide relatively soft light, which is definitely a plus. For audio, I wanted a mic that matched this setup, but also provided great sound. I went with the tried and true Blue Yeti. The color is called Whiteout, and I've gotta say, this thing is dope. Here's a quick example of how the Blue Yeti sounds. I thought about grabbing a set of speakers or monitors, but I decided I wanted to focus on making this setup not only practical, but more on the budget side. So I went with a pair of headphones. Once again, I chose a tried and true model, the Audio-Technica M50X. They have a very natural sound, making them great for audio editing. Plus they come in this white color, which is just sick and it matches the setup perfectly. They're hanging on a Lamacall, I think that's how you say it, a Lamacall 360 degree headphone stand. It's pretty cool since it can rotate in a complete circle, which is a nice way to tuck my headphones under the desk. So what do you think of the sound from the Blue Yeti? Let me know down below. The drawer unit I'm using is the Alex unit from Ikea. It's like the number one YouTuber drawer unit. I picked up the casters to go with it, which Ikea sells, and they are definitely worth it. Inside the drawers, I'm using these clear plastic dividers, which are great for keeping the drawers clean and pretty well organized. Next to the drawer unit, I have a cool industrial style lamp that really adds to this setup. I popped in a Philips Hue bulb so that way I can adjust the color to the blue that you see, which in my opinion matches the setup perfectly. One cool thing about this setup is this artwork up here from Grid. As you can see, we have like some old school Apple electronics, like we have the original Apple Watch, we have the 
original iPod Touch, and then we have the iPhone 3GS. Everything has been deconstructed, and there's like a little bit of literature about each component of every single Apple electronic, and it's really neat. It just makes the setup look a little bit more Apple-like, I guess, and adds like a, a nice pop to everything. I really appreciate these, and shout out to Grid for sending these out. They look absolutely beautiful, and I'm going to link them in the description if you feel like picking up some of their artwork for yourself. So one thing about this office is it also doubles as my multicam setup. So I have an overhead camera and I have like my A-roll camera and this is where most of my videos take place. And I wanted to get everything off of the floor to make as much space as possible. So as you can see, I have like my audio setup here with an XLR cable that runs over down the wall into my sound devices Mix Pre 3. And then I have an A7C here set up on a Manfrotto ball head, um, which is pointed down for my overhead shots. And then I have a Ninja V here for whenever I'm recording those overhead shots. And everything is connected using two um, impact very poles, which can hold like 60 or 70 pounds. Like they're extremely sturdy. And um, yeah, they've, they've done a wonderful job. And the best thing about this setup is these impact arms right here can just loosen and then they flip down. So whenever I'm not using them, I can loosen them up, swing them out of the way, and then tighten them up. Same thing with the audio. Whenever I want to record a voiceover or when I'm about to start a video, I can just loosen up the arms and then bring them down, tighten them up. And then when I'm done, I just push them out of the way and then tighten everything back up. So it's just like that versatility and, and ease of use that this very pole setup offers that um, I'm a huge fan of. Now, I know as I get close to this light right here, I'm going to be super ghost like and blown out. I have a um, Aperture 120D mounted on another very pole going uh, horizontally across the walls. And this is the Lantern softbox. I wanted something small, but still soften the light um, as much as possible. And the Lantern softbox from Aperture works really well. And again, this impact pole holds it up no problem whatsoever. And everything is mounted to these impact poles using super clamps. The super clamps are amazing. I'm actually gonna probably buy a few more because they're only like 20 bucks. And I'm thinking about mounting like a slider overhead just so I can get more dynamic overhead shots by using a slider. And then over here, I have one of the IKEA pegboards that are seen in pretty much every tech setup now. And I have my uh, little surfaces mounted on the pegboards. So that way, whenever I want to do some product shots, some overhead product shots, I can just grab one of my surfaces. And then I have all the accessories for the surfaces right here. So everything that I need to record videos is just easily accessible. And it just, um, I don't know, that, that's the whole thing with this setup is ease of use and accessibility. That's why everything is on wheels. Everything is mounted off of the floor. That way I don't run into any roadblocks in my creative process. So there you have it. That is my 2021 iMac setup, as well as like a mini office tour. You could do a lot with a small space and that's what I'm going for here. Also, I have another office right next door to here that I'm going to be doing an office tour on that one as well. I'm just waiting on a couple more pieces of furniture. So if you guys don't wanna miss those videos, make sure to subscribe and then turn on notifications so you can be alerted when those videos go live. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and um, I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.